All right, so we just spent uh, half a day flagging for pike and came across a pretty good one, kind of packing up for the day, and now we're gonna go clean it. I got a uh, way that I can take this off the fish and keep it all in one fillet and take out all the Y bones, and I'll show you guys how to do that here in a second. Another thing I do when I first catch a fish and ice it, and if I know I'm gonna keep it for the night, I'll take a knife, and I actually run it between the eyeballs and it kills it instantly. I don't know, there's some term for that. And then another thing I do is I cut the throat so it kind of bleeds out. And you'll notice now once you start cleaning the fish that there won't be any blood inside the fillets and it'll be nice clean white meat. All right, so the first thing that I do is I always cut away the belly meat. So I start kind of by the fins. Basically just cut away all the white meat so it's, you can see where the coloration starts on one side and the coloration starts on the other side. Just kind of work that up to the, up to the front. And then I bring it back, same thing, down to the bottom. That's basically all junk meat, so I get rid of that. All right, the next step I do, is just like cleaning a lot of other fish, start up by the head, come halfway down, and start working your way back just above the spinal cord. until I get back down to the bottom fin and the top fin. Then you can push your knife through. And now you want to have downward pressure. So you're rubbing against that spinal cord all the way down to the tail. I do like to leave them in the snow a little bit. It gets a lot of the slime off the side of the northerns and then it's a little easier to deal with. You don't want them to be, it's hard if they get rock solid, but as long as they're pretty firm, then it's not too bad to come through here and and kind of the meat has a little bit more resistance and they're easier to to work with. Just keep working your way down. So that's the first step and then you got a pretty good looking fillet. Now you can tell here the main spinal cord runs just like that and you can see all these white dots, these two of them. That's the top side of the Y bones and the way they start and the grain of the meat, they kind of start up in here and they'll run and then they'll split and one Y will come up this way and one Y will come up this way. So I always start with the pike, the top side of it facing away from me. And you can see all the little white dots, that's the top of the Y bones. And you want to start with your knife cutting straight down just on the top side of those all the way across and moderate pressure. You don't want to slice very hard because you're going to get down to where the Y bones kind of split off. So I make a slice. The Y bones don't go past the tail either. So I just stop like right about where the, that top and bottom fin was. And you just make a slice. You just kind of keep slicing down until you start hearing little ticks on your knife and that's the the Y bones. So now I got down there and you can, I don't know, you can see the knife kind of jump. Probably can't hear it, but you can feel it and you're down to the Y bones. The next step is, now you pretty much got, instead of going straight down, you got to go straight outwards. Just a little bit, about a, a blade length. So you kind of make a cut like that. A little bit more. And then you can see all those bones kind of laying right in there. And then the last part of it's kind of subjective, but you can see I use this little line here kind of as a guide. And you want to come basically on the underside of that and now start cutting upwards to get those bones out. Then you start peeling it back and just cutting upwards. It kind of looks like I'm cutting my fingers, but you can't really cut your fingers because those bones protect it. And at this point, then you just kind of pull, almost like you're skinning an animal, like a deer or something. Just pull with tension, give it some little knife cuts, and that will start coming out. You can go back forth, 
on both sides. A really sharp Rapala knife makes a big difference when it comes to cleaning them this way. And now you got a piece of pike that is 100% boneless. And then the last step is just gonna be cutting it like a normal fish. So I always like to come to like the edge of the table. That way your handle can rest kind of below the edge of the table and you can keep your knife extremely flat as you run along the bottom of the fillet. And you want to have a little bit of a downward angle with the knife blade, but not much because you will cut through the skin. Pike are pretty kind of skinless or small scales, but that's how you keep pike boneless in one fillet. And that'll eat up just as good as walleye or any other fish. And then also if you notice, there's no blood in that fillet. It's all gone from the earlier procedure of cutting the throat and letting them bleed out for a while. You can if you want. Lastly, sometimes you can cut this little spinal vein thing out. A lot of times what I do with these is I'll make pickled fish out of them, so then I'll, I will cut them down into smaller chunks, but you also can just hack it into thirds or fourths and they make pretty good sandwiches. And then there's always some of this grainy kind of belly meat stuff that where the fins attach. Clean that up. Another thing is when I'm cleaning fish, I usually stick around. This is about a 28, 29 incher and I usually try not to do this method on anything smaller than this. Um, you can, the only problem is, is once you start kind of hacking out these Y bones, you're not really left with hardly any meat above it. And you're not really left with any meat below it. So you just kind of, you do a lot of cleaning for not very much meat. But if you get a, a bigger pike like this, like, you know, a seven or eight pounder even, those clean up really nice. You get a lot, a lot of meat out of one fish. If you don't want to keep it in one piece, another simpler method is, is you'll come down and out and then instead of trying to kind of feather out those Y bones, you'll just basically bring it down to the skin, cut that chunk off as one piece, then you can hack the tail and bring that down as one piece and then you can come in and just cut on the bottom side down to the skin and you have like a third piece. So that's a, an alternative option as well if you don't. It takes a little while to get a, the hang of it doing this way, but if you do it on, on bigger fish, it's, uh, it's a lot easier than the smaller ones. The smaller ones, you'll kind of break through those Y bones because they're so, so thin as well. And if you do catch a really small one, like in that 22 inch range or something like that smaller, I think most of those Y bones, they'll either dissolve while you're pickling them. If you leave them in the pickling marinade long enough, they'll just completely go away, but then you have to pickle them closer to a, like a month kind of thing. But anything bigger than that, I usually try to always take them off.